Welcome to the Tony Olson Fishing Show. In this episode, we're going to be taking you predator hunting. Where are we going to go? Albury Hill Lake, Dorking in Surrey. Mike's coming with me, and what species are we going to be catching? Well, it's going to have teeth, obviously it's going to have fins, of course it's going to have fins. What tackle are we going to use? You never know in the Totally Awesome Fishing Show, it could be something like this. here on an absolutely beautiful day. I don't know if they call it late autumn or early winter, but we're on the balcony here. They've got a nice cafe here. If you want to come and have anything to eat or drink halfway through the day, and that's what we're going to do, but not before I've had a little chat and got some information from Mike Goddo. Mike, Mike now works in the administration side of uh, Old Berry Hill Fisheries up in the offices, but he's worked in the tackle shop and more important, he goes fishing. Now we need some tips. Tell us a little bit more about this, what, what this fishery is really about in terms of predator fishing? Uh, yeah, well, as, as I say, we pride ourselves on sort of being probably the premier Zander fishery in the country. Uh, I mean, there's not that many Daytica lakes that have Zander in, um, so we try and promote that. Um, and we've got, we've got some big ones in here, um, as I was telling you earlier. Some of the ones that got moved over from our specimen carp lake, uh, grown on in there up to sort of 17 pounds. And they're, they're in wow, that's a big fish, that is a big fish, um, yeah. But yeah, as I say, the, av the average size is probably around five, six pounds, and there's, there's some big shoals of Zander and a fair few pike still in there as well. So now, years ago, I knew it basically as a pike fishery. Yeah. I didn't do a lot of fishing. I maybe did a couple of stories for some of the angling papers years and years ago. I remember fishing down by that Isle of the Pike. I think we had a couple of you know medium-sized pike, yeah. but it was a sort of premier pike fishery. Then they had the Zander come in. Now it's changed a bit now. Just yeah. tell us why that is. You know, it seems to be a little bit more colour in the water. Well, yeah, the uh, the sort of the there's so many fish in it now these days, carp, bream, everything, and what they've done is they've stirred up the water a lot more, uh, made it a lot more cloudy, and um, it sort of suited the Zander a bit more than the pikes. They've sort of out-competed them a little bit. I mean, there's still pike in here, um, but the Zander, they do so well in coloured water and at night and stuff, and they've got such big eyes, they, they hunt a lot more effectively, and they've sort of out-competed the pike, really. Now, um, today we've got a blazing blue sky, which is absolutely fabulous for photography, but it sounds like it's not going to be great. The Zander are going to be down there with a pair of Ray-Bans yeah. on, aren't they? They're going to need a pair of sunglasses. So, is it a low-light condition type of fishing here? Yeah, Tell us a bit I about mean, that. Gen generally, you do daylight like today is not ideal, um, but that's not to say they won't come out, but sort of clouded over is the best chance of a fish, uh, or as it's getting dark. Um, as I said, they are sort of nocturnal fish, really, Zander. So as it's coming into dark, that'll be your best time for having a few, hopefully. So it's worth, if anglers do come in for the day, you know, you don't have to write it off. You can still pick up maybe a pike or a Zander, but you're saying definitely hang on for that last the couple last of hours. The last couple of hours is definitely the best time. I mean, some people come here and blank all day and then they have a big hit of fish just before they're leaving. So don't get too despondent if you're not catching in the day. Now he's, he's used that word that I love to hear, but it makes me quake, a big hit of fish. <laughs> Are you talking of more than one Zander? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get more than one run? I mean, well, as I was saying to you earlier, I did, I did um, a, a day the other day, um, and we were only here for two and a half hours. Um, and we had we had four fish each, and really? uh, the person I was fishing with, Josh, he had he had two double takes. So as it was oh, getting really? dark, both his rods were going off at the same time. Is so. that right? So so one assumes there's some form of do they hunt in a shoal? Yeah. Either? Well, the smaller ones especially, they they are a shoal fish. Um, so there's big groups from them that move around, um, and so like I say, you can get you can get hits pretty quickly of, of multiple fish on different rods. Really? Uh, the bigger the bigger fish tend to sort of hold off the main shoal a little bit, but. Gen generally, they all sort of hang around together. Um, now, uh, it's a big water, I don't know how many acres here, and you've got islands, you've got features out there, probably as far as I want to cast anyway. Do you need to cast out? Is it like carp fish? No, we go no, for no. the ends of the islands, or I do mean, they come in? I mean, the Zander, they come in fairly close. Um, I mean, especially around the boathouse, around here, the deep water, they do like it around here. Um, that's not to say you won't catch further down the bay or, the, or down up the jungle, but I mean, all you want to be doing really is underarm flicking it, a couple of rod links out, that's all you need to do. Is that all really? Yeah. yeah. Now yeah. run us through what the sort of standard Xander rig, what would, what would you fish here? Uh, we're starting from the hook end really, I mean you can either use hair rigs, we sell we sell all the rigs in the shop. That's these guys, in case you want to have a look, like that, yeah. you just show them those. Um, we've got sing, single hook rigs, uh, hair rigs. No trebles here? No trebles, single hooks only. Uh, we do do a double single hook rig. Yes. Um, 
but I mean, all you really need, for the Zan especially, using sort of small chunks of fish, about this big, not, not big. Oh, really? Um, not whole fish? Not no, like no, no, whole no. sardine fry. I mean, there. compared to a pike, Zan have got quite small mouths, and yeah. they, they can be finicky feeders. So, I mean, all, all, all you really need is sort of roach head, a little chunk of mackerel, just something small. Yeah. Size six, size eight hooks, a good, good place to start. Now you've, you've got these rigs here just so people can uh, yeah. just. An example of the rigs. Up on the camera there. That's, uh, the, this shows you the exact rig. So uh, I haven't got rigs like this. So much easier, really, guys, just to come in the tackle shop and get the rig, because you know the fish are looked after here, and that's what it's for. Isn't that's it, really? the main, main aspects for the fish welfare. That's why we sort of operate single barbless hooks only. Yeah. Because I mean, especially at this time of year, when the water's still fairly mild. Uh, they can swallow the baits pretty quickly. So. I've heard that before that in the mild weather, you know, they, they, they they're a little really more active the and they sort of picking up baits and moving and swallowing. Um, so basically, you just want to be instant strike. We don't, you do get the odd drop fish, but we'd rather have that than yeah. the deep hook fish. Deep hook with the treble, you can't yeah, get out. Exactly. exactly. Now just run us through these. This, this top rig here. So that's what, what's that's that consist the, of? That's the single uh, single hook rig. So basically, it's from a swivel, crimped onto a length of wire, down to I think that one's a size six, but we do we do size four, six, and eight in the shop. Yeah. Um, and like I say, all, all you're doing with that is just putting on a bit of chunk of fish straight on the hook. Yeah. Now, what is that piece? Of, is that just to cover That's the crimp? That's just to there? cover the crimp. Yeah. I mean, it's it, cover the you sleeve. Don't, you don't need it, but it, it just makes things a bit neater. And, I've got you. Um, now then, your but, double hooks. You know, when I looked up, it said double hooks. I thought they were like the VBs or the old salmon hook, which you guys used to have like yeah. that. It's not. You, this is what you call a double hook. Yeah. Rig so for it's a double single hook rig, basically. That's Two just, single hooks. Wanting to try tandem, a bit of a, a bigger bait. Which some people do prefer, sort of a whole sprat or something like that. This yep. is what you want to be using, really. Yep. Um, but gen generally, at the moment, we're finding the hair rigs and the single hook rigs are fishing better anyway, just with little chunks of fish. And this is the hair rig at the bottom. And that's here. the hair rig, and it's, 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 it's the sort of same as the standard carp hair rig, really, just with, with wire. Now, these are the size baits. I mean, I've got sprats, I've got sardines with me. You've got all the bait you can want, it's in the yeah, tackle yeah, shop. Do that's the other thing, there. guys, the tackle shop is a fully stocked tackle shop it's not just tackling it it's all the bait you can want and more important you've got natural dead bait which I know are really good for pike perch zander anything like that so you have got the uh, uh, uh the, what these be roach or rod would they be they're there? Roach, roach, yeah. roach are they yeah and um, all you need to do with them at the moment we're finding as I say they're small roach anyway but yes what we people have been doing is using little head sections little tail sections probably get four baits out of that of those roach four baits out of there yeah or maybe three <laughs> But yeah, no, and all you're doing is just hooking it straight on there and casting it out. So would you hook them through the eyes or something if you're using the head? Do you need to elasticate them on or, or you not? Don't just need to, because, them I mean, and fire them out. Because as I say, most people aren't casting that far out anyway. I mean, as long as it's through the eyes or through the lips, just a little underarm flick out and it should, it should be fine. And that's it, yeah. yeah. Um, other other species, I see it's got smelt, trout, lamprey section. Yeah, and we've got... We've a mini pipe pack, what is that? That's just a variety of baits. I mean, they think they come with mackerel, sprats, roach, and blueies as well. So oh, blueies, yeah. You use um, those sea fish, yeah, you? yeah. So it just gives you something to try, different to try on the day. Okay. I mean, at the moment, roach is the best bait. Early season does seem to do well. Yes. And then as they get fished for, they seem to wise up a little bit, and that's when you sort of see dead baits come into play. Yeah. Um, and, and trying something different on the day. Oh, that's good. I, I, I wonder there should be a bait here that we definitely all anglers should want to see in here that the Zander are eating. Crayfish, American signal crayfish. Yeah. It would be nice if they ate their way through Britain's crayfish stocks. Yeah. That would help everybody, yeah. I think. So all these packs are the same ones, I guess. Uh, yeah, they're roach. Now, the other thing, um, I don't even remember if I've caught, I've been to the Norfolk Broads up there once. I can't even remember if I caught a Zander up there. If I did, it was tiny pound or something like that, two pounds pike fishing. So it's new for me. So Zander number one for me is going to be a PB. Mike, our cameraman behind the camera, is definitely up for Zander, aren't you, Mike? Yeah, definitely, yeah. So they could have two PBs here. But the thing I see is, obviously, I'll look at the, the, the photographs in the press, they don't have a big jaw, do they? No. So no. how should one swallow a bait? What, you know, what, what's, what's the deal? You I can't mean, just open his jaws up so, like a pike. Well, they're different to pike in the fact that, you, you, for a start, you can't chin them out or put any weight on the gills like you would see some people with the pike. They put yep. their hand under the gill plate and lift them up. Um, to unhook them, you put your finger in the gill and just sort of tease the mouth open. Like I say, not putting any weight on the fish. Yes. Um, and then because it might it. tear, I guess. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, and then with a long pair of forceps such as these, I mean, you do you do want long ones just in case they do swallow it down. Because I mean, you see the size of these rigs. Yeah. Especially the big ones, they can take them down quite far. Um, and then with the with the barbless hooks, single hooks, they should just pop out fairly easily. And the other thing, uh, I'm thinking they've got quite small gill covers. So yeah. with a pike, where we would get a deep hook fish, you could gently go in through the gill covers, not the gill rabbit breakers, don't damage those, and turn the either small treble 
or a single hook over, you can roll it over and pop it out. Yeah. That's not so easy not, with a sander, is it? No, 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 that's really. why you need these, I guess. Yeah, and that's why we operate, as I say, a single single barbie hook, because it just makes unhooking so much easier. Much easier, yeah. With yeah. a pipe, as you say, trebles would be all right to, to unhook, but with with sander, you want to be using. Be a nightmare. Yeah. You'd be losing fish all over the place. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah. So we know where to go. We maybe we move swims. Uh, we tried a little bit of boat fishing earlier on, and we. We, we think we're going to set up now for you know just sitting on the bank. There's not really much benefit of going in the boat for sand. Do you think I mean, the you bank fishing is as good? Yeah, bank fishing. I mean, most of the fish come out on the bank. Uh, boat, boat fishing just makes for an enjoyable day out, really. That's, that's yeah. the main advantage to it. Um, although some the, the area up the top of the lake, uh, the jungle, yeah, um, which isn't accessible from the bank, that's the only advantage really of the boats. Yes. I mean, you can get up there where the fish aren't being pressured from the bank. Any no fishing zones around here? I can see the island there. Is there anywhere you no, can as is it like say, a, a, a bird area or something? No, no, it's all, it's all open for fishing. Um, as I say, basically, it's just the jungle. Yeah. The pegs don't actually stretch all the way up there, so you can get up there in a the boat. You can still fish up there. When you say jungle, is it snag city? Are we talking uh, lily in the beds margins, or what? No, it's mainly, trees, mainly branches. marginal trees, branches. So you can like lose gear, so watch yeah. out for your gear. Yeah, there, exactly. Yeah. Um, now, you were mentioned earlier on, Obviously, we got uh, I got carp rods, pike rods, that sort of thing. We, we don't go for overkill, big, heavy carp rods. No. But what are you saying we could use here? Well, you mentioned like a, a sort of even barbel yeah, type rod. Yeah, even barbel here. type rods. All you need really, sort of main line, sort of eight to twelve pounds, something like that. Yeah. Um, you don't want any, you don't want anything carp rods because it's just too stiff and you're too bumping out fish. You, you get no. Oh, yeah. you could bump the fish off, I guess. Yes, yeah, exactly. Because yeah. the, the smaller, the softer, even barbel type rods, because they they do when you you'll notice if you catch a few, they bump their heads. Yes. quite aggressively. Oh really? Um, and you can feel it on the rod tip, so with a soft traction rod it takes up those lunges a bit better and keeps the hooks in. And uh, would that be a tip for anybody using braid, you know, because braid you're going to get that shock. Yeah, if exactly. you have a stiff rod you might you yeah, might lose the fish, yeah, so exactly. better so off with a soft rod and, and just regular nylon line. Mono, you give it a bit of stretch, yeah exactly. Well we'll give it a go. Anyway, Mike, thanks very much That's for that. Right, no worries. Uh, next thing is uh, for you not to tell us about the tackle, let's get some sausage sandwiches or something out of this cafe. they got a very nice boathouse down right by the side, right by the side of the cafe. What better place to have a boathouse? You can eat before you go out or when you come back. They're nice punts and they come with a nice paddle, not oars. When I first saw it, I thought that's going to be difficult, but actually they're pretty good, those hand paddles. They're like the sort of old fashioned canoe paddles with a grip. Now down the bottom end of the lake, um, you've got what they call the jungle area. That supposedly is a good area, but we were going to concentrate on just going around the island. There, as you can see, is the cafe. Nice little food place. There's good stages all the way around the lakes. You can pleasure fish there. You don't have to sand a fish. You don't have to do anything there. You can just sit and fish for what you want. Bream, roach, anything, tench, you can, you can fish for what you want. We went out, Mike got the anchor down. We were ready for action. And will we catch something in this bright sunshine or not? Fish on, Mike, fish, fish on, on, fish on. Yeah. <laughs> so the, uh, so Dad just tells me, I'll just oh, yeah. take that rod there and give it a twitch. Nice and smooth, nice and smooth, nice and smooth. We don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. It's, I don't think it's huge because it's kicking a lot, but... Just keep the pressure on him. The, the, where's the net? Because <laughs> we've got, got nothing organised. We're doing the echo sound. He's already anyway. here. I want to see what it is. I don't know what it is. There's the float, guys. There's the float. Something's definitely on there. What is this fish? Well, it's not a decent Could pie. it be a Z? Well, not that easy, <laughs> surely. Oh, 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 yes. oh, 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 oh. I've got no net. Hang on, guys. Mike is on to his first head. It's going to be a PB, Can nice you see and it smooth. On the just to prove it. I just saw a flash of it. Then that's all I saw. They oh, no, I saw his eye then. Slowly, 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 slowly. Get him, my beauty. That's a nice head. I told you, it's nice. It's a nice one, man. Oh man, let's get organised. We're in an organized. absolute mess. Look, we are completely <laughs> clustered. We've been playing with a little ball echo sounder thingy. <laughs> And I said to Mike, <laughs> here's a ball echo thingy. Oh, I just trod on it. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it's a 160-pound step. Look at this fish. Keep him in the water there. I'll get the mat. Oh, I can't. The boats are so hard that I'm actually, <laughs> I'm sitting on the mat there, guys. I'm actually sitting on it. Oh, what a fish, man. You tweak that. Once, once, one, once, one jerk, one jerk, and then you saw the float, didn't you? you said I just said that's a fish. Gone. Yeah, I said the float, it's a fish. Let's get organised. Okay. Look at that, fellas, in the net. My first ever, first yeah. ever Xander. I've never seen one in real life, let alone caught one. I'm going to get it on the uh, unhooking mat. Yeah, he looks decent. And let's he looks show decent. you guys, and we'll get it weighed as well. Oh, 
tell you what, that's not bad size. Not bad fish, eh? It's like three pounds, probably four. I've got, I've got not just, uh, um, not just normal forceps. You've got brain surgery. You can surgery unhook a one. shark with these. If you can see that, folks, there's their teeth. Look, they've got those vampire-like teeth at the front there. I can feel them there. I've got a nice grip. They, they really do. Uh, Two fangs. Mike was right. They've really got small gill covers here. Yeah. And I, I can the, see. Uh, I'm so glad we got those single hooks because literally. There we go, look. Hook straight out, easy. You, you can see why they do single hooks here at Old Berry Hill, but let's put that out the way out of the net. And let's Hold check this up. out. A totally awesome <laughs> Xander, folks. Unbelievable. I cannot believe that. I cannot believe that. One twitch. One twitch of the deadly One scratch. One of that. That method is lethal. If you've not seen it, we've got a, a video called um, float, Dead Bait Fishing with Floats. Uh, for pike and the method is just unbelievable look at the size of that eye you can see they're night predators that is awesome that is a totally awesome predator right there you see the vampire like fangs. fangs at the front and i tell you what they got a really rough skin they remind me of a shark so they're not slimy no one way is really smooth and one yeah. way is really really rough well i've just popped him back in the water in the net just to get him recovered a bit uh, while we got organized with the waist thing so Hopefully this is the moment of truth. To be honest, I'm really not bothered what it weighs because I'm so chuffed, absolutely chuffed that I've caught one of these fish. So let's get it on the waist thing and see what this beauty weighs. What an awesome predator, man. Moment of truth, fellas. We are clear and we're looking at five pound five ounce. Really, that's not bad absolutely made up with that five pound five, five, five that is awesome let's have one last look at it quickly and then we'll get it back what a beauty the, uh, the vampire jaws on it man vampire absolutely. fish absolutely vampire yeah, fish they do ball. call it the vampire fish how awesome is that look at those teeth man i like his fin yeah the that dorsal, dorsal here that dorsal if you get it out of oh it's bikey too yeah huge dorsal right let's get it back hang on then. hang on well, there you go, folks. What a totally awesome fish. Easily the coolest bit of day's fishing I've had. And we've only been out an hour on the boat. I was casting this little, uh, it's called Deeper, and it's a little sonar. I was casting this out. It's a castable sonar. It's a really cool bit of kit. And you, I worked it on the app on my phone. You can see the depth. And we were just casting it around. We're only, it's relatively featureless out here. It's just flat. We're in the kind of shallow end of the lake. It's only one and a half meters deep. I thought, oh, do you know what? I'll just cast it in the snags just there. And I cast it probably three feet away from the bank and it was giving me a depth reading of about a meter, pretty much a meter. But the brilliant thing about it is, it gives you the kind of um, composition of the lake bottom. And most of this was all silt. And then when I cast it over there, there was a good foot depth of, um, of weed, probably, I don't know, Canadian pond weed, something like that. I don't know what weed it was. And so dad had the idea, he took, well, let's chuck a, chuck a sprat over there. So he chucked the sprat over there with the float set at one meter's depth. And I just, he said, give that, give that rod a tweak. So I just tweaked it once and the float just went boom, under. So it must have either just landed on that fish's head and he's just seen that flash of that sprat and absolutely nailed it. And um, they, they tell you what, they put up a pretty decent fight, lots of head thrashing, and I'm really glad we had those single hooks. But thanks to Mike Goddard in the uh, tackle shop because he, he did tell us about this sort of fishing and he said, make sure that if you catch one, get a rod out quickly because the chances are they're shellfish and you might get another fish. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna chuck one right around these ed edge of these uh, snags here. So let's get a rod out. I'm always drawn to twitching that float for generally pike, not in snags. You don't wanna fish in snag areas, but let's face it, you need to be close to them. But all you gotta do is pop that float and that means you're just jigging that sprat, the roach dead bait, the smelt, the sardine, the mackerel, the herring, whatever you want to use, that little tweak, if you're tweaking the float, it means you're also tweaking the bait behind it. And that flash could be just the trigger that sets off that predator into making a strike at it. And I'm wondering, on my first ever Xander trip here, if they don't like bright sunlight, what about that shadow line running along there? Would they not be in there if they don't like bright, you know, open bright blue sky conditions? Maybe it'd be worth fishing in those dark shadow lines. Maybe around the other side of an island. Maybe where the sun doesn't come out and hit the water. 
Though Santa can certainly get your brain thinking, there's no question of that. And look at the setting of Old Berry Hill Lake. And there, is it my house? No, it's not. But it could be. It could be, I'll have the right hand one, Mike has the left hand one. We'll put the wife in the middle. All you've got to do is just work that bait nice and steadily, nice and slowly. The predators are in there, but who knows what that bird is up there? Anybody out on YouTube know what species of bird that is? So there's plenty of water to choose from here. You can fish from the bank, you can fish from the boat, but we, about 4.30 in the afternoon, saw this gentleman catch not one, but two fish off the bank. That's enough for us. We were back from the boat onto the bank. Now, the other thing you can do apparently is you can get, well, I can get, I'm using a pair of scissors, I guess you could use a knife, is to cut some bait up, almost like chumming in sections like this. Just cut out with a pair of scissors, I'm guessing about this size. What do we know about it? We've only caught to the one zander in the boat, so we might get another one. There's a little roach, frozen roach. I'm going about three. Mike was saying about four baits. So I guess, look, they're just chunks. They're just chunks for them. They must come around and either smell these. I feel sure they smell them. They must do. And obviously, scatter them out there. Watch out to, for the seagulls. Make sure you do it with a seagulls aren't about because they do learn that the you know the people that come here zander fishing do chum up and throw them out and the ducks and the seagulls will pinch them all let's get them out there a couple of rod lengths out apparently they come in here and i wonder you know is it because not only they're nocturnal but a lot of the pleasure anglers here dump all their bait in there as we know from our sort of margin carp fishing videos that they do come right in close well, if they're coming in close, I wonder if those predators come in with them. So they're used to the anglers packing up at dusk and they're coming in as well to feed on the small fish. We shall find out. Well guys, we've got out of the boat, we've come back in here, been to see uh, Mike, give us a few tips. A lot of anglers fish along there, so we thought we'd come and try in the evening, like he said, and I've got a real small one. Anyway, dusk is approaching, dusk is upon us, and I feel there might even be a chance of another one. Hook fell out, that's the best of barbless. And as Mike said, very rough skin, don't they, Mike? Yeah. Yeah, really rough very skin. Rough There's a skin. big spiky dorsal there. Yeah. And those teeth at the front, look at those. And I can actually see his eye sort of around the outside of the black, it's sort of Huge lighting eye. up a little bit. Well, two PP Sanders. PPs? <laughs> post and package. PPP, post and package. <laughs> <laughs> two PB Sanders in one day can't be anything but totally awesome. What's that splashing noise? <laughs> Let's get it back. I was Mike said earlier out in the boat, they've got a rough skin, and it really is, you can't run your finger back that way. And the other thing is, look where their pectoral fins are, way, way up here by the edge of the gill cover. And then ventral fins here, quite a long way forward, and the anal fins at the back, and the caudal fin is there, the tail fin. And I will call that one a secondary dorsal, and it's fibrous and soft. And that one is the main one that's got the spikes in it. Let's get the little chappy back. There he goes, yes sir. -y. Well, nothing more to say except let's get another bait out. That's, I'm on the one of my big rods and I tell you what, look, I'm getting something is really. Oh he's a headshot. And that's braid and stiff rod, so be careful because he said they could be a bigger fish, but Yeah, but he said they shake, didn't they? Look at that reel, he's still pulling it out, and that's on a that's on a stiff drag. So this fish, and he really went for it. I'm on a stiff rod here. And 25 pound braid. Whoa. Holy <laughs> it's, it's a he, he's, <laughs> he didn't put the battery out. He nearly came on the fucking dock. <laughs> he's from up the It's like a bull it. shark in Florida when I was with Dad. <laughs> oh, what, the, oh, what the bloody hell that was? Yes, yes it's, under. it's a nice one. Look at that eye. You Glowing it, in the dark there, yeah. yeah. This is a better fish, I think. This might yeah, be. I think he's about the same size, though. Look at that eye, though. Big old eye on it. Well, having caught that fish, you'd think my son would let me go in his swim. No way. No sooner as he netted that one, he's hooked up yet again. He's taking me out again, I think. <laughs> Whoa. He's out there. This is, they tell you what, they do scrap well. You've got to watch those head shakes. They throw you? their heads a lot, yeah. And they're only single hooks, remember, so you don't want to bully them, really. But there he is, look at that, in the light. Get in, yes. He's in. Another one bites the dust, let's get him on the mat. 
What bait was that, mate? Right? What do you reckon that was? Uh, what was that? The right hand rod. That was a that was a sprat. I think. It was a sprat, was yeah, it? Yeah, that was a sprat. I had another drop run. I missed a fish and bumped yeah. it, and that was on uh, half a roach. Yeah, it's a sprat. So we'll get we're going to get. You can see that eye shine. I can actually yeah, zoom in yeah. there. Do you know what? That could be bigger. That could be bigger than the last fish. Lay him on the mat. I reckon that's big. I'm Actually, he's got a bad one. Do you want to look at him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That scales for that and the sling. That's a bigger fish. I know straight away that's a bigger fish. Yep. All right, get him in the way sling. Don't want to get, have him out too long. I've zeroed the scales already. So we're looking at, could it be a new PB in a day? So five, five. Or, last one was you five, five. Bigger? I reckon five, 13 maybe. I reckon not. five and a half, maybe. Um, or five ten. So five ten. PB. Oh, five double PB five then, yeah. Ten. Let's take a look at this fish before we get him back. It is a pretty awesome, totally awesome predator. Look at that. What a beaut. Yeah, it's nice, isn't That's it? A yeah, nice it's fish. a nice fish. And there look are at the those ice. evil fangs. <laughs> that is totally awesome. Check that out. It's got a bit of a gut on that one as well. A little bit Quite belly a thick big. fish, yeah. You know what he's got? Yeah, all those free spreadings. All the get. freebies we've been throwing yeah. in there, yeah. We'll get a quick photo and then we'll uh, get a still get of that back. one, yeah. Good oh, fish. There we go. One last look. That is one totally awesome predator. I'm not going to let him swim. Oh, he's, he's gone. gone. Wow. <laughs> Listen, it's not getting funny now, guys. He's really kicking my butt on these Xander. He's in again. That's on a tight drag again on this stiff rod. I'll tell you what, it's like Piranha Villa over here. Oh, oh, oh no. that's your buzz. Let's oh, go, no. go. <laughs> You're on there, Kevin. Yeah. Well, if you can hear that noise, that's Dad's buzzers going. Oh, I'm absolutely. It sounds like he come back with a pair of lips the way he just struck. And I've still got a fish on here. You got one? No, he missed him. I tell you what, this is carnage. There's my reel, and he's still stripping me. <laughs> It's another Xander, look at that. Little bars of silver, these fish. I can just see the bend of the hook now. And it's out. Oh, and I'll have my bait back, please, mate. It's not a specimen. But I tell you what, that Xander, what, number four? Yep. <laughs> number four, and we've had three in about half an hour. Yeah, yeah. It is totally awesome fishing. Look at those vampire fangs. That's why they call them the vampire fish, I believe. They are totally awesome. Let's get it back, get that bait straight out there. Well, we've uh, we've had a good sort of seven Xander now, and uh, it's gone a bit quiet, but I had a little look in the margins with my head torch, and come and have a look what I've seen. Just down here, I can see the tail just there, and look at him. See if we can get on it. It's just there. Under the leaves. Sitting in the margins. I might be able to see it, I don't know. It's just yeah, there. you see that eye. He is under that twig. <laughs> I'm going to put the power of the lamp up. He's looking pretty camouflaged. I can see him there. See if you can just take that stick away, Michael. Just real slow. He's probably going to boil. There he goes. goes. Look at that, man. <laughs> what an awesome fish.